Makako. Um, my name is Shar Chun Lam, and I am your guest host for Out and About today because Winston uh, is not here today. So he's kindly let me help to do this show. And I'd like to thank the people who have come to appear on the show. Um, this is Kuike, Kamake Ohelo, and Maureen Harnish, both from Save, All, um, Save Our Sherwoods. And we'd like to talk today a little bit about uh, the situation in Sherwoods and um, let the audience know, because I don't think everyone does know the story about why you are so impassioned about trying to do this for your community. So um, before I guess we get the first slide to come up, um, shows a little bit about Sherwoods. So this is the area that we're talking about that you um, discovered uh, suddenly that these bulldozers are coming. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit um, about what happened when you first saw them doing this? What was your initial response? Um, when we first found out about this project, um, it, was as, it was as quick as this. This is the timeline. One day, a board was erected that says, building a better Ramanalo, and the next day we know, we see a bunch of machines rolling in, pushing over trees. Wow. So it was okay. pretty um, heartbreaking for us to see all of this happening in our community and not being informed, nobody telling us about it. So what initially sparked all of this was the interest of, you know, what's really going on? What's really happening? Okay. And you've been really successful um, at gathering keep, uh, community support. Um, so, for example, the slide shows that you know, this is just one slide of the kind of gatherings you have. The next one, slide number two. Okay, so I think you've been having people sign waving regularly, right? Is that the case? Uh, yes. When we first started, for the first two months, um, it was every day, Monday to Friday, um, from wow. 4 to 6. And then uh, recently, in the last month, um, we've been doing uh, Wamanala Wednesdays. So every Wednesday is from 5 to 6.30. Um, there's a solid core group that comes out. And, you know, uh, we've been seeing people put on the side of the road and uh, doing a good fight. Well, that's great. So the community is really getting involved and behind this. So, um, and part of it is I'm going to, the next slide I think shows the desecration basically. So you want to talk about this a little or either you or Maureen, either one? Um, one of the things is that this area, we sent a drone up to photograph this because it didn't look like what the master plan said they were going to be doing. And they did deviate from it. And we've questioned the city office of design and construction and said, you know, why, why doesn't this look like the, the original plan. And they said, oh, we decided to go another way. We can always put it back later. Okay, so just to back up for the mm -hmm. audience that might not know about this plan. Okay. So there is a master plan, supposedly, that the city has proposed doing, and suddenly they put up a sign, and then the next thing you know, they're bulldozing. So they, what is the extent of this plan? I mean, they're, they're taking away this before you got them to stop, but um, how much of the forest are they destroying? Well, this is only phase one. It's Couple acres, right? Three acres, yeah, four so acres. Yeah, it's just under four acres. Just under four acres, but the whole master plan that they intend to do is seventy-five acres, and we don't want to see this last coastal forest taken away. Right. So the the object they said, or the reason they were giving for this master plan, is to provide parks, or yes. I mean, not parks, but to provide fields for right. people to play. But I know you guys have brought up the situation, like why, why not? what you have and can you say something about that? Or? Yes, um, well I uh, was born and raised in Wamanalo and um, in my youth have uh, utilized uh, the parks just with uh, um, playing um, baseball, um, went there to watch football, never necessarily participated in football but um, I've just seen over my lifetime just the parks deteriorate. So the city and county, you know, they have this problem where they start things and mismanage or don't even manage at all. So there's a bunch of neglect happening. No maintenance. No maintenance at all, you know, and um, our dugouts are rusting out. Um, our fields um, have holes in them, mm -hmm. you know, and um, the grass is not green. It's not being watered or maintained, and um, amongst other things. So that's one of the reasons why we spoke out against this project is because looking into the master plan, they have no maintenance plan. And in, within the master plan, um, according to their maintenance plan, is they recommend or suggest maybe partnering or getting a nonprofit, a local nonprofit, to do the maintenance of this new sports field. OK, 
Okay, so it's it's a field that you feel is, I mean, they can't even take care of the ones you have. Right. Mm -hmm. And now they want to introduce a new one that um, is going to cost a lot of money and going to take another nonprofit, maybe not from your community, to maintain this. But there's no guarantee. No. Because you've seen all this neglect on the other fields, too. They should stop and discuss that before they right. continue with this right. development. So, plus, I think part of the fields, I think I heard this discussion about water, that yes. they were talking about mm -hmm. using, like, have to water the fields, obviously, or water everything, but they're not, and they're, they're talking about using recyclable water, but there is no recyclable plant. Where is that the situation? Do you want me to take that? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So the uh, Waimanalo Bay Beach Park Master Plan says it calls for R1 recycled water from the Waimanalo Sewage Treatment Plant. Mm -hmm. Well, there is no R1 water in Waimanalo from the sewage treatment plant. That's an R2 facility. And it's millions and millions of dollars in years away from an upgrade. But the interesting thing is, is they're laying pipes, water pipes out there now. They're digging trenches mm -hmm. and they're laying pipes. And pipes are different color for different things. And they're not laying recycled water pipes. They're no. laying potable drinking water pipes, a nice bright blue color. And the plan calls for 157,500 gallons of potable drinking water to be used every day to irrigate this thing. So this is water, and you already have a water shortage in yes. Waimanalo. Is correct. That, so, yeah. There's a huge water shortage in Waimanalo, and especially we. um you know, when we get notices in the mail from the Board of Water Supply to limit, you know, or reduce the usage of water because of such um, water shortage, and to hear about um, potentially up to 170, 150,500 150, gallons of potable water a day to water wow. grass is... We don't want that. <sighs> yeah. We don't want that. It's unnecessary. So currently, the way, the way Sherwoods was, I mean, people weren't irrigate or, no. you know, regularly sprinkling. I mean, the, the trees kind of provided that um, canopy and that they could, they could survive in right. that. But now they've kind of taken it away. I, I know I think I heard the mayor say something about, oh, well, we're going to give them back Hawaiian plants to plant there, but these are not... Um, that means there's going to be a tea leaf next to your car in your <laughs> parking stall in the parking lot, and you can, you know, step on as you go by. But the trees were also important because it wasn't just, I mean, it could, wasn't it a habitat for the hoi bat? Yes. There are several endangered species that use that area. Uh -huh. The Hawaiian stilt, Hawaiian duck, um, the shearwaters, the wedgetail shearwater, uh -huh. and the other shearwater whose name I forgot. But there's two different uh, protected shearwaters that are using that area. And the Hawaiian hoi bat. And we went out there the other night, and the whole forest was filled with bats. Uh -huh. So um, it's very upsetting. Because they're not, they're not going to use this baseball field. They're, they need their forest. Right. right. And the, the bats normally nest there with their, their young. They do. So that was, they're already an endangered species, and yes. now they're being more endangered by this. this well, action. their habitat is being completely decimated mm -hmm. by right, the city right. and county. So they're decimating the habitat that's not only for um, the wildlife, but also you feel for the people, because that's where your people normally would go and picnic or what have you. So. Um, this next slide, just really quickly mm, up there. This is kind of showing the full extent of the plan of where it would be. No, actually, oh, this, no? this okay. is a little different. This is something that we mapped out. This area is on the National Registry of oh, Historic okay. Places. Okay. And we took the GPS coordinates from the National Registry in Washington, D.C., okay. and remapped it just to make sure we had it clear. Okay. And the area they're developing in Sherwoods is right in the middle of this map. And so they're developing... They said in their um, um, SMA permit, their special management area permit, that this area is not on the National Registry. But we checked, and it is on the National Registry inside anything inside that box. The National Registry, the State Registry, and the City and County's Historical Registry. And they're, they're pretending that's not true, and it is true. Okay, I think the next slide <clears throat> we have sort of shows... A Proof that this right. is true. Okay. This is the original form um, for the National Registry that shows this is an early prehistoric site. And they refer to it as the Bellows Field, and they gesture in the direction of Bellows and say, oh, it's over there. It's not over there. They're calling all of that area, all the way from Lanikai to where the McDonald's is, they're mm -hmm. calling that all is this archaeological area that's got federal protection. Um, and they refer to it as the Bellows Field. This uh, document has the GPS coordinates on there, and we wanted to make sure we knew what we were talking about, so we remapped it. 
Okay, based so, on the coordinates. So that was the previous slide. You, you took the coordinates right. and then you and made, a made a map. Oh, okay, that, that makes sense. Okay, so it... And this it, is currently this is on current. that registry. Right, so even though the city said, oh, there's no problem because it's not on the National Registry. They're not telling the they're truth? They're not telling the truth, right. And the city said it in their permit that they filed for in, back in 2013. Mm -hmm. And it's right there um, after line item 10A, I believe. Page four. Page four. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't have to read those documents very carefully. And it's, so it's, in other words, the premise upon which that they said it was okay to put a field out there is not incorrect. True. It's in true, not true. It's based on, I mean, they could have found this out, couldn't they, themselves? That Absolutely. It, really is. it wasn't hard. Kawike and I, we're not, we've got an amateur group of people. We're just right. regular people. And if we can find it out, I'm pretty sure with all the resources the city has that they could have put somebody on it and found it out. They know. Well, let me, let's, let's go back a little <clears> bit <throat> to the, you know, your everyday people, because you know, a lot of times when people form a group, they say, wow, is there some big money behind this or whatever? But tell us a little bit about um, Save, um, Save Our Sherwoods. Who makes up the group and what's your mission and those kinds of things? Well, um, Save Our Sherwoods is a Native Hawaiian nonprofit. And uh, we're totally community-based. And um, it's just a group of concerned citizens from Amanalo, concerned school Aina from Amanalo that um, Oppose the development of this space, the Wamanalo Bay Beach Park, um, and we, that we also know as Sherwood. So we got um, everyone from, uh, I, mean, I myself am a farmer, and we talk about the simple folk, <laughs> um, you know, and then my, of course, uh, we have um, other family members on there, um, mothers who work from home, and um, people who work in the corporate field as well. Um, and group uh, community members like Maureen and um, a few others that uh, basically, you know, just your normal community folk. I mean, I really don't know how to explain it. It's all just, different kinds of people. It's all different kinds right. of people. That care about this area yeah. and don't want to see it destroyed. So you guys have been really good. I, I so admire the social media you guys have used, your Facebook page, your website, um, because you've, you've posted a lot of videos from people you know, walking through and maybe telling them, right. telling people why they feel this is so important to them. And I guess the really frustrating part is that, um, and maybe, by the way, maybe that is why you're getting more and more people, right? Because I think, don't you have an online petition? We do. We have an online petition that has more than 28,000 signatures on it at last check. And mm -hmm. the city discounts it because he said, they said it can't be audited, but mm -hmm. it's 28,000 signatures. Right. There have been so many projects that have right. stopped with less, right. have been stopped with less. So, um, just for, okay, so we're, we're getting, nearing the half, halfway point of our show, and I'm going to just um, talk a little bit about Save All Water Beach Park, sure. and then we're going to go to break, come back and go to break, but just because we were on the show two weeks ago with Winston, and I just wanted to give you an up, update on what's happened. So, we were talking back then about the resolution needing to go to the city council, but it passed unanimously. So, everybody in the council actually voted in favor of this urging the mayor to do a third draft. And I know, similarly, Sherwoods is asking to stop and do another, right. another EA or EIS. Okay, and then, so the next steps, like you, we're waiting the mayor's response to, the, to the listen to the voices of the people, and in this case, the city council. For us, it's listen to the people and keep all one of the people's park. But for you, I mean, you're living in that community. So it's not just, you know, I visit the park, I don't live in the park. But you live right next to Sherwoods, and so I can understand how critical this is for you. So um, just to let you know, we're going to have to take a break because they're um, take a break to identify some other people who have other shows. And we'll be back in about 60 seconds. And then we'll continue on talking with Kuike and Maureen more about Save Our Sherwoods because I, I know a lot of you would want to get involved. And so thank you so much for tuning in. Please keep tuning in for the next, uh, when we come back for the second half. Thank you. Hey, aloha, everyone, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii. We air here every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Hawaii time, trying to bring you issues about security that you may not know, issues that can protect your family, protect yourself, protect our community, protect our, our companies, the folks we work with. Uh, please join us, and I uh, hope you can um, maybe get a little different perspective on how to live a little safer. Aloha. Hi guys, I'm your host Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World, 
I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. And this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you, and uh, aloha. Welcome back to Think Tech and Out and About. I'm with my guests here, Kuike and Maureen, and they're from Save Our Sherwoods. And we just were starting to talk about some of the key issues for the group. And um, uh, this next slide that's coming up here, this, this shows a recent rally, I guess yesterday even, right, that you mm -hmm. had a vigil. So you want to explain a little bit about this? Yeah, this, uh, this image right here is from yesterday's uh, vigil that we held alongside of a Colonial Nole Highway. Um, in the same space that we occupy every week um, to express our um, concerns and opposition of the development of this space. So yesterday, uh, August 11, 2019, um, we, the community, uh, we at Save Our Sherwoods, we wanted to uh, educate the community, basically, and um, remind them of the Ivi Kupuna of the remains that have been already exca excavated and found and dug up and repatriated back in the early 1990s from 1971-72. So, Uike, I, I understand that you and some others actually made all the crosses for this, yeah. this event. So the cross, the, the next slide, I think. So, um, good friends of mine at Kinai Eha um, have agreed, you know, open-heartedly to help us manufacture and paint these 94 crosses. So it's 92 and plus two um, crosses so we can uh, have and hold this video and demonstrate. Right. So this isn't the actual burial spot because the burial no. spot is right beyond the fence, right? Well, it's secret. Se where the well, it's secret, spot okay. Yeah, but correct. you, I've heard you testify, Kuike, that you and your mother um, there were bones returned to be reinterred, right? Mm -hmm. From, um, was it Smithsonian? Or? Yeah, so um, in the early 90s, the, when the Ivi Kupuna were reinterned, um, my mom participated with a small group to repatriate these Ivi Kupuna mm -hmm. back to this space. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fast forward to 2019, um, for, for us to, for the stars to realign and for us to be called back to this space to defend same Ivi Kupuna to defend the same space. I mean, there's something much larger than us. There's something mm -hmm. spiritual that's pulling us back. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why, I mean, that's why I'm really passionate about this place right. and protecting it. And I know, um, Maureen, you did some research on yes. the next slide, I think, that shows where you got the number of who, because of these other studies that were right. done. That right hand column there on the um, table is a report of the findings. Now this study was done by the city. This is from the archeological monitoring plan that the city hired Pacific Legacy to do. This is page nine, table one. And on the right hand side, it lists all of the different years that, that E.B. Kapuna have been located in this area and where, where they were found. And so we just counted them and that's how we came up with the number 92. So, you know, Normally, when there's EV discovered or EV in an area, you can't touch that. Right? Well, you can if you lie about it and yeah. say that they're not there. Yeah. And so basically the, the, the idea that people are told, oh, no problem, no problem. But they're basically lying because, I mean, yes. and they have it on paper. They have it from a report. So it's questionable about and, the, um, that, that EA being our... Um, appropriate or being oh the EA is so not appropriate mm -hmm. it's from 2012 but you have to remember that 2012 was not the year that the numbers were based on that's old information mm -hmm. it was based on a year 2000 census we're about to have another census next year mm -hmm. why not wait and see if these numbers are actually working for that community they're not and then um, the traffic statistics the numbers for the traffic were based on 2007 Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've driven through Waimanalo lately right. on the weekend, but it's bumper to bumper right. in all directions. It didn't used to be that way. Right. Um, the water usage is another thing. The EA says they're going to use recycled water back from 2012. There's still not even a plan. Mm -hmm. I called the wastewater treatment people within the Department of Health and the Board of Water Supply. 
there's no plan to upgrade that sewage treatment plant to an R1 facility. There's some budgeted money for upgrades to the treatment plant, but not to upgrade it to an R1 facility. So they don't even have the intention to do what they said. If that doesn't trigger a supplemental EA or an EIS, which should have been done right. in the beginning, I don't know what will. So, you know, basically you're talking about people living there, having concerns about their, their park disappearing into all these acres of gone forever parking Once we lose it, and, it's gone. and fields that need to be maintained mm -hmm. and really not being uh, listening to your, your people about your concerns. And, and I, I know you've also said, I think you've also testified that, and I, said, I guess it's also in the findings, that this is one of the original landing spots, the Plymouth Rock, I guess it is, <laughs> for Hawaiian people. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Uh, well, I've, I've said it a few times in, you know, in uh, the testimonies that I've delivered. Um, that according to science, um, the space here, yeah, hold the Ivi Kupuna that um, through science have been carbon dated and proven that uh, these Ivi Kupuna um, the remains are as old as 500 AD. Mm -hmm. There have been some dispute about what, what year, everybody has a different opinion about it, mm -hmm. but they're really old. It's really old. And I, I think I read in one of the papers you gave me that there was actually like, um, Symbols of royalty on one of the bodies. So there's a, there's some question about whether this was not just you know uh, well it wouldn't matter whether it was just for common people or the royalty, but it was a place that was um, yeah. it's a village. A so village. It's a village. My kaula in naivi kupuna ikala. So I won't necessarily give the description of how this body was uh, was found, um, but yes, there have been uh, there is evidence. Um, that uh, our kupuna and this particular person uh, was adorned yeah. with um, symbolisms of, you know, that she was possibly royalty. Mm -hmm. And um, because of how she was found, how she was wrapped, as well as the red sand that was, she was found in. You know, and that's not necessarily a, a common practice. Right. So... This place is more than just a place to have another playground or another park, which apparently you don't necessarily need. I mean, what would be more important would be to keep the, the park the way it is. Yeah, the, the current narrative, um, you know, that the city and county has been playing uh, for the greater community was that the Wamanalo community is divided over a park. And this is not for me from the very beginning, um, from my first testimony, when I first spoke out about this, it's not about the park. This is about the erasure of history. Mm, this is yes. about the bulldozing and covering of our identity. Mm. And without our identity, what do we have as a native people? What do we have as the first peoples of this land, of this aina? We mm. have nothing. So we need to speak out and stop and stop this kind of desecration from happening. Right. And I, I think that um, every community has their own woods or or Mauna Kea or what have you that they we need to keep enough, preserving enough already right. enough, enough. Already. right mm -hmm. and we certainly hope that the people who are in government will really pay attention to the people and I, I think one of your um, I think you've said you want to get the people involved in every step of development that involves them so can you explain that a little bit more well, um, we have five city councilmen that are uh, city council people that are um, in our favor right now mm -hmm. And, and uh, hope that helps us along the way somewhere. Um, originally, there was a, a couple of planning meetings and the city did some outreach, but it wasn't very much. Mm -hmm. And the, the community clearly didn't hear you. And to me, communication is the responsibility of the communicator. They knew they weren't getting through to this community. And if they weren't getting through, they needed to try another way mm -hmm. and try again, mm -hmm. not try to slide this by when nobody was looking. This right. is too precious to the Hawaiians and right. too precious to the environment to destroy this without very careful consideration before moving forward. Um, is, can we go to the next slide, please? I want to, this slide shows basically people of all generation, right? Your multi-generational mm -hmm. people getting involved in making a statement about yes. the community. So can you want to talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, what we see are the faces of the Aloha Aina past, present, and future, you know, and um, what we see are also kia'i. So uh, part of the narrative as well is, you know, we're protesting. No, no, we're here to protect. 
you know, and these ohana right here that we see on this slide are here because they feel the need, they feel necessary, you know, it's necessary to protect their history and identity. And that's why they speak out and that's why they aloha aina. And, you know, I delivered a speech yesterday and one of the lines I said was, all we have is aloha and that river never runs dry. Mm -hmm. And this is what we see. It's captured, encapsulated in this image forever. I think what's really, um, it's, it's, you know, we can hardly get right now people, older people to vote or be involved in government. And you've managed to get the whole community, the keiki and the kupuna and the, and the people who are working and have to, you know, they kind of come home from work and go stand there and, and, and sign wave. But right. um, they're, they're willing to do it because they really care so much about their community. And I think there are very few communities left like Waimanalo. So it's, it's right. kind of interesting. And I, I hope people will um, consider supporting you in this effort because I know that it, it isn't cheap to do this. You've been doing this since May, isn't it? Actively since May, probably April twenty third. April twenty third. Thank you. April twenty third, and it's been um, months and months of having to try to write to people, trying to influence people. So I, I think um, the next slide happens to show um, how people could support you. So there is a GoFundMe page. You want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, there is a GoFundMe page. It's um, you can see it on our page, our Sherwoods .com or our Facebook page. We'll lead you to it, and we are raising money for our um, legal fees for our campaign okay. that we're working on that we're not ready to talk about yet. <laughs> I know. Um, I'm very proud of you guys that you managed you. to make yourselves a nonprofit and you're, you're taking action really. We feel strongly about this. And that's really <laughs> just been in, in a few months. So you should be commended for the great job you're doing. Oh, thank you. And I want to thank everybody who's been uh, tuning in to Think Tech today with um, Save Our Sherwoods because this is such an important issue for our people. And it's not just about Sherwoods. It's, it's about, as you say, the larger thing about why people being disregarded and not not listened to and really this is our we are the host people we need to have people recognize that we we have the wisdom we have the knowledge we have the aloha and, and we also have truth and we have truth the truth is on our side and the truth is on our side thank so, you for giving us a chance to talk oh, about it's this. been my pleasure and i'm sure winston would be pleased to if you were able to do this so i want to thank everyone for um tuning in to think tech i want to thank the uh production crew for helping us get through this because this is the first time for all three of us to yeah. be in these positions. I haven't been the host before. And I think for you two, it's probably the first time you've had to it's my first. be on television <laughs> for so long. I mean, you get these little 30 minute seg seg or uh, three minutes to testify, but it's a longer show. So thank you for letting us go in depth about this. And I hope everyone who watches this will pay attention to their website because actually your Facebook page has a lot of, you know, the next steps you're going to yeah. do. Please find us on our social media. On Facebook, Save Our Sherwoods. And Thank tonight you. is the Waimanalo Neighborhood Board Meeting, mm -hmm. and that's another chance if okay. you feel like taking a little road trip tonight. So we're, we're ended now, but thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you for coming again, and aloha, ahuiho. Ahuiho.